Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to have a gentle introduction into how to make web pages interactive using JavaScript. To do this, we're going to use a web-based development environment called Mozilla Thimble, which is used for learning how to do HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The website is just thimble.mozilla.org, and you'll need to create an account so you can save your work that you do in Thimble. So you can create an account, make a username, put in your email address, and choose a password, and you can sign up. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in with my account credentials and get to my Mozilla page. I'm going to start by creating a new project by clicking the New Project button. It will take a minute to load up a, the beginnings of um, a project, and it gives you your HTML file, an index.html file, and they've already um, started your HTML file. They have the HTML tags here, they have your head tags here, um, and they already have taken care of some things that you usually see at the beginning of your HTML files. They've put a title in there um, called Made with Thimble. Maybe we'll change this title, and we can edit this document just by um, typing things into it, just like you did in the Khan Academy tutorial. So we're going to call this um, the activity chooser. We're going to do make a, a little uh, web page that lets somebody um, it takes some input input from a user to say what activity they would like to do. Um, in the body of uh, the uh, a, a, the HTML file, and you can see over here in the preview window, it will show you exactly what should render on the web page. So they have welcome to Thimble and an H1 tag. Let's change that and we're going to just um, greet our website visitors. So uh, we'll just say greetings. Greetings website visitor within the H1 tag and you can see it creates a large um, heading in your web page. There is also um, paragraph tags here, and they put make something amazing. We're going to just change that. And we'll, or we're going to ask, pose a question to our website visitor. What would you like to do today in our paragraph? So um, this is kind of a simple web page um, going on here, and it previews the changes over here on the right. Now, in the Khan Academy tutorial that you just finished, um, they used uh, CSS to style their website, and they put the CSS right in the HTML file. But in this case, we're actually going to do what you usually do when developing web pages, and that's have your um, CSS in a separate file. That way, it's a little bit easier to keep things organized and to be able to separate your HTML code from your CSS code. And if I click on the style.css file, you can see you, um, the CSS they have for um, the body. They've um, added a background color. Um, they've picked some fonts. Um, and they've chosen the font size and picked a color. And they also have some styling for the H1 tag. But in order for your HTML file to be able to use the CSS, you have to um, create this line right here, which they've done for you. Um, the link tag, so it's link rel equals, and in quotes, style sheet, href equals, in quotes, style.css. So that's the name of the CSS file. And that way it knows to get the style for this web page from this CSS um, style sheet. So you can go ahead and click over there, and you can, again, edit this. So if we, uh, if we wanted to maybe change the color for our h1 tag, we could add a new tag for color. And then they have a color picker here as well, so you could go through and pick one of their preset colors. Or um, once you choose it, it gives you, um, when you click on the kind of keyword, they, I picked crimson, you can also click on that little lightning bolt and it will give you a color picker so you can choose whatever you want and it's previewing it over there. So once you have it all set, you can close that and it puts the hexadecimal um, number for the color in there.
You can play around with this and style it whatever way you want using what you learned in the Khan Academy tutorial. I'm going to add one more line to my body styling and I'm going to align my text in the center so that everything will be in the center of the web page. So I'm going to do text align and you can see it's filling in some keywords once it figures out what you're trying to do. So I'm going to choose center and you can see now my text is centered in the middle of the page because of that line in my style sheet. All right. What else do you remember from the Khan Academy tutorial? Let's add an image in here. So I'm going to do an image search so I can find an image in Wikimedia Commons. So I will go to the Google image search and I will, um, so we'll restrict it to site um, the Wikipedia site and I'm going to look for a question mark. So I want a giant question mark icon and um, hey, we'll pick this one right here. Take a look at that. That one seems fine. So I'll right click it and copy, oops, copy the image address. And then I'll go back to Mozilla Thimble and add my image tag. So I will do IMG, oops, source equals and then paste in my address and then we'll put some alt text in there alt equals question mark and let's set a width width equals let's try 200 and we'll close the tag and we'll refresh and so you can always refresh your web page there and there we have our image um, entered into our website all right before i go any further i'm just going to name my project i call this the uh, activity chooser and save my name that way i can find it in my list of projects all right at this point i have a styled website i've got an image in there I've got a heading, I've got a paragraph, but now I'm at the point where I need um, to make my web page interactive. I need some input from the user. I want them to have a way to tell me what they would like to do today. And to make my page interactive, we're going to use JavaScript. Now, just like with um, the CSS styles, you could do it right in the HTML file, um, but instead, I like to keep things neat and have it in a separate file. So in Mozilla, I'm just going to add a new file here, and I'm going to add a JavaScript file. And it's going to give me a file, script.js. And it already has some JavaScript written in here, but we are going to do something different. So I am just going to select and delete the JavaScript that they have typed in there. So in my script file, I'm going to write what's called a function. And a function is just a group of code. You give it a name and um, it will do something in particular. Um, so in this case, I'm going to start that I'm going to make a function. So I'm going to type in the keyword function. And I'm going to give my function a name. I'm going to call it choose activity. And uh, ending with open parentheses, close parentheses, and then an open curly brace. So everything in the function has to be between these curly braces. So not square braces and not parentheses, curly braces for functions. Then I'm going to um, make a variable. So I'm going to just say bar, and I'm going to call my variable activity. And a variable is just a container that's going to hold something. So this container is going to hold whatever text the person types in tells me what activity they want to do. Now we need a way to get something into the activity variable. So I'm going to say in this variable called activity, I'm going to make that equal to and I'm going to prompt the user. So I'm going to type in prompt means to get information from the user and then open parentheses in quotes what is that prompt where it's going to pose that question 
tell me what you want to do. Close quote, close parentheses, and semicolon to end the line. So it's going to prompt the user, tell me what you want to do. And it's going to put what the person types into the prompt into the variable activity. So now I have to think about when I have an answer that they've given me and I've put it in the activity variable, so it's, it's holding on to it. Well, what do I want to do with it? And I'm going to want to display it on my web page. So I need to make a place on my web page to display it. So I'm going to go back to the index.html and I'm going to, I think, put a couple of breaks in here just to give me some space underneath my question mark. And then um, let's say, let's make um, our answer display in an H2. So I'm going to add an H2 tag. But I need a way for my JavaScript um, function to find this particular H2 tag. And the way I do that is I, I give it a name, basically, um, uh, called an, I give it an ID. So I'm going to say ID equals answer within that first h2 tag. That way I know that this h2 tag in particular is named answer. It has an ID of answer and so I can refer to that when I'm in my script. Right now though the h2 tag is empty. There's nothing actually typed in here so if I refresh my web page you'll see nothing shows up because there's nothing actually inside the h2 tag. We're going to use our JavaScript to put the answer, um, what the person um, types into the prompt, we're going to put it in that h2 tag. So here back in our script file we're going to um, put something into that h2 tag that we gave it an ID and called it answer. So we're going to use um, a JavaScript method called document get element by ID. And capitalization is important, so make sure that you type it in exactly the way I have it. And you can also use it. It's helpful by filling it in for you, which is great. And the element that we want to get by ID, the ID that we chose for our H2 element was answer. So we have to tell it, open parentheses, in quotes, it's called answer. And we are going to change one particular um, one particular property of that um, H2, and we're going to change the inner HTML. So the H2, whatever was supposed to be inside that HTML ta uh, tag, we want to put something in it. What do we want it to be? Well, we want it to be equals to, and I'm just going to, you're going to type in what you want to um, be displayed on the web page. So I'm going to tell the person, great, and then plus. And then whatever they put in the variable activity, and then plus, and then a space, because I want there to be a space after the activity and before the next part of my sentence, sounds like a fantastic idea. Close quote, semicolon. All right, well, I can refresh my web page, but still nothing's happening because although I've written my function and I, I know what I want it to do, I haven't actually told my function to run. So let's go back to our HTML file, and after our breaks here, um, I need a way for the user to um, have a chance to tell me what they would like to do today. And so I'm going to have them click a button. Um, that's going to uh, invoke my JavaScript function. So I'm going to make a button and whenever somebody clicks it, so on click, I want it to run my choose activity function. And the uh, button, I want it to say what do you want to do? Oops. Forgot to close my first button tag. That's important. So the opening tag there. 
and this closing tag goes after the text that I want to display in the button. So now when we refresh, we now have a button and inside that button it says tell me what you want to do and when I click on that button it's supposed to invoke the choose activity function. However, there's one more thing we need to do. Just like with the style.css file, I had to tell in the HTML file where that CSS was located. The same thing with the script file. I need a line in my HTML to say where that script is located it's in the script.js file. So just at the bottom of the body, I'm just going to add my script tag and say the source is equal to script.js. And then puts the closing script tag there and we're good. So let's refresh. All right, now let's test our button and see if it worked. I'm going to click the button and it says, tell me what you want to do. And maybe I want to go hiking. I'll click OK and it changes my web page. It says, great, go hiking. Sounds like a fantastic idea. Oh, I didn't put a space after the word great and before go hiking, which I got from the user. So I might fix that in my have a script, I will add a space after the word great. So now I'll refresh the web page again. Sometimes you have to hit it a couple times to make sure it goes through. This time I'll say go fishing. And there, now we have a space. That looks great. So my website has now become interactive. It prompts the user to tell me what you want to do. It takes that answer and it changes the HTML and puts it inside a H2. Great, go fishing sounds like a fantastic idea. So you now have made your first interactive web page using JavaScript.